Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong, and thank you for joining me for another Tech for the Rest of Us. Today, we're talking about Samsung's Galaxy S9. I've had it for about a week, not long enough to do a thorough review, but definitely long enough to give you my first impressions. So let's get right into it. So this is the S9 and this is the S8. And you can see that aesthetically, they're pretty much the same, but Samsung did listen to many of its users and change some key elements like the fingerprint scanner. On the back before, when you reach for the fingerprint scanner, you might smudge up the camera lens because the fingerprint scanner was right next to it. Also having to reach for it on the larger S8 Plus and even on the Note, uh, it's kind of awkward because if you have smaller hands, it's, it's a little awkward to get to. They listen and they put the fingerprint scanner in the S9 and S9 Plus below the camera. So now it's actually a little easier to reach. It's in a more natural place and you're not going to be as quick to smudge up the camera as you reach for it because it also has a little bit of a raised area there so you feel when you're coming up to it. Definitely an improvement. And while we're talking improvements, let's talk about the camera. The camera on the S9 Plus is probably the best camera that Samsung has put out on one of their phones to date. With this camera now, you get a lens which actually allows you to choose between 1.5 and 2.4 aperture. What does that mean? Well, for you in low light, you get to open up the iris just like your eyes, no fixed lens here, allowing in more light. Like you can see in these pictures here, side by side. And one, you see that it's brighter because I shot it at 1.5. The other, I shot at 2.4. So when you're in a dark environment, a darker environment, you're going to actually allow more light into the sensor so that you can get a better picture in that low light circumstance. The trade-off is that when you get more light, you're actually going to get a little bit softer image. So keep that in mind when you're looking at shooting in those low light scenarios. The other item that they put into the camera now is the ability to just swipe between the functions in the camera menu. You can get to that selfie mode, the AR emoji mode, wide selfies, those are all on the front camera. And if you're on the rear camera, again, you're gonna be in auto mode, selective focus, super slow-mo, and a few others. And speaking of super slow-mo, the S9 is going to record super slow-mo at 960 frames per second. What is that? It takes that and extends it out to about six seconds. As you can see here, one of our producers, Candice, actually modeled the slow-mo for us. As you can see, she had the party poppers, she had the deck of cards, and it's really clear, really crisp video. It's going to record at 720p, which is uh, not full HD, uh, it, it is technically HD, but if full HD would be 1920 by 1080. And while we're dealing with the camera, let's take a look at AR emoji. My issue, my only issue with AR emoji is that um, it doesn't support beards, okay? Beards are pretty popular. I'm gonna need you, Samsung, to put out an update that allows me to put my beard on my emoji because as you can see here, he is shorn. He has a smooth face. I do not. It is not my emoji, but it can be your emoji. All you have to do is hold the camera up to your face, take the picture, and then you can customize it with different hairstyles, different clothing options, uh, glasses, all these different things to make the emoji truly your emoji. And then once you've done that, Samsung actually has some default looks or some default gifts that can be utilized with your emoji. They're pretty cool. I, I imagine a lot of people are gonna be using the no GIF. I know I certainly will get a whole lot of use out of that. One of the other things that is an improvement on the S9 that maybe some people haven't had to deal with is I've had trouble with face recognition on previous Samsung phones, and I think it has a lot to do with the beard and the way their facial recognition technology works. But on this with Intelligent Scan, which actually utilizes iris scan and facial recognition, this phone pops right into the home screen in the blink of an eye. I mean, it's, it's so fast, I don't even see it doing it. So if you've had issues in the past with 
face recognition on one of the Galaxy devices, the S8, um, you will definitely want to go in and turn on intelligence scan and use that combination of iris scan and face recognition. It's definitely been a winner for me. And last but not least, one of the things that I really appreciated on this phone is having used the Note and so many of the other Samsung devices, the sound was always a little anemic. I mean, it was loud, but it was a little hollow. And I've also enjoyed using other devices that had front-facing speakers. I'm a big proponent of front-facing speakers on a smartphone, especially phablets with larger screens, because they're really fit for media consumption. They're really great for it. So I don't understand why they don't. Well, Samsung solved that issue with the S9 and S9 Plus by making it so that they now have stereo speakers that play from the bottom and from the earpiece. So you're going to like the sound. Check it out. As you can hear here, here's the difference between the Note 8 and the S9. Can you hear that? A little more robust, a little fuller sound. Yep. So those are my first impressions. AR, great. I'm going to need that beard thing hooked up. Fingerprint scanner, thank you for listening and putting it in a little bit lower position. Stereo speakers, thank you again for listening. Hey, I'm going to have an in-depth review of this and the S9 Plus, more camera images, uh, definitely a deeper dive into the features. So stick with me. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see something added to the next video, and I'll get to it. As always, thank you for watching.